just like when players get drafted, the the whole family's crying, like it's a big deal. I mean, me and my father cried when I signed my contract for my job. <laughs> I had my father mm-hmm. sign my contract. I'm like, here you go, pops. You you earned this. <laughs> We're just sitting there crying as a family. <laughs> Like they, this shit means stuff to people, folks. Uh, yeah. So I love that he cried. I love that men got to see that. I love that a lot of women supported the young man being emotional too. Uh, I love that you got to see a good family. Like what this is what a good family looks like. So yeah, I just, and I go ahead. the the biggest thing for me was that not only did he feel safe to cry like that. But there were no kind of like shameful repercussions of doing that. that either. Cause a lot of families would do that where they're just like, oh, stop, stop it, stop it. You're embarrassing us or like whatever. And there was none of that. It was just like, he's gonna cry. Everyone's gonna tell each other they love each other and give big hugs. It's kind of what I always wanted. You know? Facts. Who fuck wouldn't want that? Uh, yeah. I can hear people like, to be a man. He was being a man. Being a man proud of his father. Yeah. So Sp- Spence lucky, right? He get, he knows a, right, it's his state. Minnesota's his state. Yes, we are very proud of Governor Walls. Now hopefully Vice President Walls. Um yeah. He's a, he's always been great, honestly. Throughout like the pandemic, people criticized him and things like that for some of the things that was going on, but at the same time, nobody, I don't think anybody else could really handle it the way he did, um, especially with everything that happened, uh, like with the murder of George Floyd and yep. then with COVID happening and everything like that. I think, you know, he handled everything very well. And um, I can't wait to see, you know, everything that he does in the White House at some point. So, yep. Real quick, I heard Michelle, the Michelle, say, you know what? Maybe one of those black jobs you were talking about is the president of the United States. <laughs> I was like, damn. Yeah. They went uh, all out for the DNC, bro. They did. <laughs> they did. I like it. It was pretty, it was pretty good. Michelle, man, Michelle be laying some shit down, boy. She all does. right. I'm done with my piece. I'll hand all it right. over to Spence. Let's do a show. All right. So welcome to the show, Jay. Um, just want to get to know you a little bit. Um, you tell us, how did you get to where you are now? What's been your journey to get to be an ADHD coach? Oh, wow. Um, it was a very ADHD journey. It's probably okay. the best way that I'll put it. You know, I started off as a music major and then changed my major to hospitality. Got out of school right at the height of the reception, the recession. So couldn't find a management job started working in restaurants, opened a food truck, opened a restaurant in downtown San Jose, Mm. thoroughly burned out and decided I would like to work a job that gives me dental insurance. So I just started working office gigs, jumping from place to place, doing a lot of like whatever I could basically. Um, And I ended up as an admin at Google after many years of just grinding it out. Mm. And that's where I hit this wall because it really was like nothing I had ever experienced before. Google's like the cream of the crop. Everyone there is like the excellence of every other company. And I just felt like I could no longer be the star. I was now just like everyone else, but not doing enough, not being good enough. And it was then like during this burnout period that I got my ADHD diagnosis, changed everything. Um, and then, you know, started the ADHD women at Google employee resource group, started going to coaching school, mostly just because I wanted to learn more about ADHD and maybe create a coaching program like peer coaching at Google, but then just kind of fell in love with ADHD coaching. So left my job at Google and now I'm a full-time coach, but I feel like I have a lot of opinions. I have a lot to say. And so that's why I started doing the podcast because coaching really isn't that, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you can't share those opinions. You can't give tips or anything in, in coaching. So that's why I started doing like social media stuff and the podcast. And it's so I can share those tips without 
being an unethical coach, basically. Yeah. So that's my journey over here. What, what were you, what were you cooking? What, what were you cooking up? Oh, so many things. Okay. So when I first opened my food truck, I wanted to make low calorie comfort food. So like a uh, lower calorie mac and cheese and chicken nachos and oh, rice shit. bowls and stuff like that, where it doesn't feel like we're giving anything up Yeah, to eat more fiber and vegetables and stuff like that. And then, um, and then this is what I did, which was a huge mistake. I said, I'm going to go on the food truck diet and see like how much weight I can lose eating mac and cheese every day or whatever. And so I only ate food off of my truck for like a month. And then I was like, I never want to look at this or smell this ever again. No. And so I changed the concept to sliders and pie, which is very high calorie comfort food. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got carpal tunnel in both of my wrists. So I mm -hmm. sold the truck and I had a friend who owned a bar, a very popular bar downtown. And he was just like, do you want to open this restaurant with me? So I was like, okay. And we made at the time, very obscure American classics. The Bay Area didn't really have anything that the, the rest of the country was making. And we're like, this is really cool. We should be making some of that. We were like one of the first ones to make like shrimp and grits in San Jose. And, you know, we had like a, we had a lot of game meat. So like rabbit and, rabbit and waffles. And oh, she only served pie for dessert, which is really hard to find at the time. Um, yeah. This is 2012 or 2013. So that's what I used to cook. And now I'm, I'm actually working on a cookbook for people who have executive function difficulties. Oh, nice. Because it's like simplify the steps, make it so that there aren't a million things going at the same time, um, really break down why we do any of these things and even have a kind of like a chapter on how to like improve our skills to give people more confidence in the kitchen, I guess. But yeah, yeah that's what I'm working on. I think I'm awesome. a love Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> I love a With woman that cookbook? I know. No, no. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Platonically. Um, man. So <laughs> Platonic. No, no, I'm being for real, man. She makes my soul feel good. Uh and not in not a weird way. Like for like your voice is comforting. I think the microphone's legit awesome too, but also it's the way you talk, the way you carry yourself. It's just very podcasting Yeah, it's funny because I have a oh. podcast microphone that like understood gave me and I feel too guilty to use it outside of what they pay me for. So I'm actually using this like $50 dynamic mic that I used to use on my own podcast. So I feel like everyone who's just starting out should get this microphone. Cause it's like pretty legit for 50 bucks. But maybe it's also your voice too. Like she got this, this, <laughs> this, they call it the soul nerve. It's only a people, the people of color thing, the soul nerve, right? You know, black <laughs> and brown folks get white folks. They, you know, y'all motherfuckers ain't regulating nothing. Wait. But I'm What'd not black or brown. I'm yellow. Oh. Like, like this, oh. like this shirt over here. Go you Kung, uh. go you Kung Pao. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, it's been nice knowing it's everyone. Does this who, yeah. what HR does this go to? I don't know. Let's go to the yeah. better bureau business, whatever it's called. B B B. -B. <laughs> <laughs> Let's calm down. Calm uh, down. No one's PBB. Uh, oh. She reminds me of someone. I just can't think about who it is. Who she reminds me of? God, I, 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 like what actress does she remind me of? Oh no, not her. Voices match. Don't say Lucy Liu because I've actually heard that one uh, times, and I look nothing like her. We're I think it's more Asian. the voice. It's the voice. Right? It's the voice. Both of you have very like. Like it's not sultry. It's something in there though, but it's like it's close to that where it's like it's just a calming voice. Yeah. Right. Well, it's really funny because a lot of people tell me uh in public, they have a hard time understanding what I'm saying because my voice is like right there in that like middle tone. Yeah. Where it's like I'm my voice is basically brown noise. Yeah. It's like not too high, not too low. It's just like right there in the middle, nice and soothing. Oh I got shit. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm mostly brown noise during the day. Oh, <laughs> that's a brown tone. That's a brown tone. Brown noise. Hey, I'm gonna figure out how I can make that tone. Well, hey. you know, I'm a brown tone. I'm a brown taste. I'm a brown smell. You know, I'm just brown. <laughs> My jaws is brown. All right. All right. Let's All get right. back to the questions. Anyways, uh, 
So, um, I read this about you on your biography on your website that how school was a very tough thing for you growing up. And I think a lot of people with ADHD, um, myself included, just it's a very tough thing, right? It's tough to not only concentrate, but then sometimes you just are like, ah, I want to do like 80 other things except for doing this one thing that I have to get done at the last minute. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about your experience in school and maybe how some of the things that you've learned through ADHD coaching, which maybe could help others in school right now? Yeah, I mean, it. the background is that I went to high school in a really high performing school district. So it's my high school was continues to regularly be ranked in the top 100 in the country um predominantly asian hey thanks for watching this video check out the full episode on our channel and anywhere you find podcasts also remember to like and subscribe whoop whoop <laughs>